Okay, so with that being said, uh, let's dive into qualifications, right? How do I mm -hmm. qualify for the all-in-one? What do I need to have? Yeah, so, um, and I'm gonna kind of be discussing based off of primary residence. We do offer this in investment and second homes, but primary residence individuals, um, you know, we're going to need to see anywhere between a 10 and 20% down for their purchase or a 10 to 20% um, equity position in their home. If, they, in the terms okay, of hold on. So 10 to 20% down. Correct. Okay, so that's been the same because I remember doing this video about a year or two ago. So that has remained the same. So 10 to 20% down required, right? On a new home. Correct. If I have an existing property with, you know, let's use that example, 400 grand is what I have owed, but the property is worth 650. Mm -hmm. What, how much money do I quote unquote need to qualify for this? Well, so if you are refinancing a home, again, we'll need to see it between a 10 and a 20% equity position. So if your home's valued at 650, um, in reality, you could owe 585 on your home and still be able to refinance into this product. Okay, okay. So there only needs to be about 10 to 20% of equity space between um, what is owed and what the value of the property is. Correct. By doing that, um, again, between 10 and 20%, you will need um, to overcome the challenge of mortgage insurance, um, which is going to be a one-time fee to the individual. And that's based off of what your loan to value is in your credit score. There's a graph. And, and can that get factored into the all-in-one itself or does that need, need to be paid out of pocket? It depends on what they owe, right? So if they owe at that, if their value is 90% or if they owe 90% of the value, well then yes, they would need to come out of pocket. But if they- Because there's no space uh, to work with. Correct, exactly. But if they owed, uh, you know, their loan to value was 82%, okay, then great. Let's factor everything in. Let's get it all paid for. Gotcha. So 10 to 20% down if I'm- acquiring a property and I want to get the all-in-one loan prop uh, product on a home I just saw like I want to buy this home I need 10 to 20 percent okay. down to use the exactly. product if I have a home already I need 10 to 20 percent in equity exactly beautiful on on top of that I mean the easy one to get after is credit score requirements depending on um, where you're at loan to value wise, it's between 700 and 720. Okay. So credit score as low as seven, but preferably anything above 720. Correct. So if you're, if your loan to value is not a 20, you know, if you're doing 15% down, then we will need to see a slightly higher credit score. Yeah. And, uh, what bureaus are you guys looking at all three or is it just one? Well, yeah, we look at all three of them and then we take the middle number. So we throw out the high, we throw out the low and we use the middle number. Beautiful. So you take all three credit bureaus and you use the middle one. So if I have a 750, a seven and a 735, you're taking the 735. Correct. Beautiful. Gotcha. And then again, depending, so th this next one is kind of like a, a two parter. We're kind of diving into two different of the guidelines, but um, your debt to income ratio needs to be below 43% debt to income, preferably below 40. And the reason why I'm saying there's two different ones is debt to income ratio at 40 and below will need 10% of your total line of credit in reserves. And if it's between 40 and 43, we need 15% in reserves. So what I mean by that is you have a $400,000 house or sorry, you have a four hundred thousand dollar, a five five hundred thousand dollar house, and you have a four hundred thousand dollar line of credit, eighty um, percent. If you're at forty percent or lower, you'll need forty grand outside of the transaction: checking, savings, stocks, bonds, four hundred one k. If you're between forty and forty three, you'll need sixty grand: checking, savings, stocks, bonds, four hundred one k. Ah, all right. So that's that's healthy. That's uh, again. Not everyone can do that. So this is one Correct. of those niche type of products where- Where we're overqualifying people, but from my understanding, we've never had a foreclosure on this product. There were thousands of people using it. No, not one person has foreclosed on it. Um, and uh, that's kind of really an testament to saying, hey, look, these people can show that they have the ability to save. They have funds outside mm -hmm. of the transaction. And, and it gives them that kind of safety net, but it also adds qualifications on our, our end. Hey, this person's safe. They got good debt to income because even 43% right. is still really attractive. Yeah. So um, you need to have between 10 
and 15% outside of your line, your equity in the exactly. property um, in comparison to what is what is owed. Is that correct? No. Uh, or what's available in equity? Yeah. So whatever your total line of credit is. So if you owe a hundred grand and you have a five hundred thousand dollar house, you get a line of credit of up to eighty percent or four hundred thousand. We would require that you have forty to sixty thousand dollars in reserves outside of the transaction. And reserves is not a HELOC. A lot of people go, well, I, I'm doing the same thing you're teaching or you're showing me, but kind of the rudimentary way. Um, and so then there's some hurdles associated with that. Gotcha. So 10 to 15% in reserves outside of any line of credit, right? Because exactly. I know some of my clients are going to be like, oh, well, I have a forty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 PLOC. Can I use that? And, and, and I mean, that count. Uh, based off of just the regular guidelines, unfortunately, no. Right. Um, but there are ways for us to kind of, again, build game plans on helping individuals. Um, yeah overcome that hurdle, especially if they're investing their money mm -hmm. because we yeah. can use stocks and bonds. So if these people are slowly investing money in stocks or bonds, um, uh, then we can start actually using that account that they're investing this money as their reserves. Okay. So if somebody wanted to be slick, cause I already know it, my clients are like that because I've pretty much built them up to essentially be very effective with every single dollar, especially uh, access to capital. Uh, especially as I'm teaching them to move all their savings, all their money into their debt tools as they're paying off debt. And then the moment that they want to upgrade to an all-in-one loan, because that's the type of people that you'll typically be working with, especially mm -hmm. with, with my audiences, um, especially with my clients who will likely most qualify are my existing clients who have a personal line of credit for 15, 20, 50 K, right? I've seen as high as 60, 70 K. Uh, credit lines, or they have a second position uh, HELOC on an investment property of some sort. Mm -hmm. So if somebody takes that 30, 40 grand, or maybe they have, maybe they have 10 to 15,000 in savings and they only need another, you know, 30 K to show for, but they have a 50 K P lock. If I pull 30 K out, that's going to increase my DTI, right? Correct. It would. But would it register upon application, right? So if I apply for the all-in-one loan, right? I'm, I'm being the most finesse slick type of person here to see if I get through the cracks of, of all-in-one because I want to make sure my clients don't try to do that mm -hmm. and they get denied, right? So that's why I'm going through it. So, cause I already know how they think. So it's, I, uh, let's say I have a $50,000 P lock. I've got 10 grand in savings. I've got no 401k, no assets, right? Just 10 K in savings. Um, and I pull 30 out of my P lock right after applying for the all in one. I give you all the information. I got the credit score. Um, my DTI is good, right? It's, it's within the, it's in the under 40%, let's just say as of mm -hmm. right now. And I apply, then I pull out the 30 K to show you, I've got 40 K in savings, right? What would you say to that? And let's say you didn't even know that they did that. You just well, I would find out, right? You because we'll out. need bank statements, and I'll see. Okay, their balance was ten thousand in October, and then in November it went up to thirty thousand. I'll see the deposit go in. I'll right. go. Okay, it came from this. I see that on your credit report or wherever you pulled the money from that the balance had then increased. We're going to need to source that, especially thirty grand. It's not a small amount of money, exactly uh, by any means. So. There again, that's where it's uh, it's nice to have conversations with people and just be ultra transparent. Hey, yeah. this is what we need to do. Okay, well then let's build a game plan so we can get you into this. This loan's perfect mm -hmm. for you. You're just missing this requirement. And the cool thing is, is that since we created this loan, we have some flexibility on it to go. Okay, you know this person, and it's not like we have the most ultimate flexibility, but we have the flexibility of saying, hey, let's look at the person, not treat it like a thirty year mortgage where they just kind of look at it as a number. Hey, everyone's kind of treated as a number. We, we try and look at it as an individual on in an individual basis. Gotcha. So based on that, with those of you who are watching, my clients watching, be slick, but not that slick. Right? <laughs> that's that's the whole idea there behind. That's why I said that, because I already know some people are going to try and do that and they're going to shoot themselves in the foot when they could have just had a very transparent, open, honest conversation with you. Right. Yeah. You have to, or they're working with someone else on your team to know that, hey, we're looking at you as a person, not a number on an application, right? 
we want to get the we want to understand the whole you of your finances because this is the type of product that you're going to have for a long period of time mm -hmm. right it's a 30 year open line of credit exactly so there's a lot that we can do together uh you being the 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 loan officer and me being their financial coach there's so much synergy and, and, and synchronization that can occur over the next 10 15 years especially if you plan on being in this space as your yeah. as your main thing and then me as well i plan i don't plan on doing anything else other than mm -hmm. other than this so it's like you've got th those securities plus you've got the product that's helping you do all these things with your finances so let's not shoot ourselves in the foot let's prepare let's what i call do pregame work if we have to wait six months three months to be best positioned for the all-in-one i would rather mm -hmm. them do that than try to force you know the approval process right it has to come in due time so with that being said um, just coming back 10 to 20 percent down to qualify have a if you have a home then it's 10 to 20 percent in equity and there will be some uh, a one-time mortgage insurance expense right less than 20 percent less than 20 percent okay credit score 7 to 720 preferably anything higher you're you're in the green there mm -hmm. dti um if it's at 43 percent to to 41 or, or 40 point one mm -hmm. there will you'll need to have 15 percent in reserves and if it's under 40 percent then it's 10 percent in reserves exactly. in comparison to the amount of um uh, uh equity in, yeah. the, in the in the home that we're getting right so if it's like you said if it's a uh what is it? if it's a five hundred thousand dollar property and eighty percent would be four hundred thousand so that would be the credit line yep right you need to see 40 to 60k exactly and what's the percentage on that was that 10 15 percent yeah 15. okay boom so that's that right there this way my clients get that because i know they'll get confused they're like wait what so that would be your example so you guys would plug in your number so whatever the value of the home is in comparison to what is owed and so you have 100k in equity right from there that's 80 percent ltv right exactly so for those watching, then you would take times it 10 to 15%. You're going to get 40 to 60K. That's how much money you need either in a 401k, a Roth, uh, an IRA, a pension, uh, or um, I don't Box, know. Box, bonds, yeah. yeah. TSP, stocks, bonds, CDs. Uh, does crypto count? It does not. So the, the, the okay. real requirement is accessible funds. So I do know that some IRAs, some... TSPs don't have full access to that money. As long as they have access to the funds, we can use it. Unfortunately, crypto doesn't work. There have been times that um, I've seen people who are, um, you know, have had the opportunity to borrow against their crypto because crypto is pretty much just anti-bank in right. the long and short of it. Um, and what they've done is they've borrowed, I guess, against their crypto and they we had to hit you know, we'll, we would need to hit the individual for a payment, but that's if you're ultra qualified, of course. Yeah. So if I had hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin, I take a cash loan against that, a collateral loan. And now I have that cash sitting in a CD or, or a savings account. Or money yeah, right. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of extra steps to get involved with that, but ultimately, cause then we would need to hypothetically hit them for that payment of this loan. Gotcha. And even in the, some of the cryptos are like, well, you could pay this back whenever and the interest rate is this, but you can mm -hmm. pay it whenever and you have no payment. So it's very loosey goosey on that side of things to where it's let's look at the specifics associated with where your money is, see how we can get access to it. What's right. the cost and go through the legal you know, circus of uh, using it. Gotcha. So it's safe to just say, guys, crypto doesn't count. Yeah, it's easier to say that. It's easier to say that. Gotcha. So now let's dive into uh, the last component here where we talked about what the all-in-one loan is. We talked about the origin. We talked about the flow, how money goes in and out and how that's pretty much all automated. We talked about the safety in the line itself, right? And that would make someone feel comfortable moving emergency funds or sinking funds or your cash envelopes or your savings accounts all into the line. And that money is there whenever you need it, but it's also manipulating the rate that you're paying. So it's reducing your borrowing costs. We went into how to qualify. Is there anything else we missed in, in the qualification process? 
Um, no, not really. I mean, it's, there's just there's a lot of creative um, information that can be done on the back end, depending on you know what you're trying to do. That can always be discussed uh, at a later time or even with an individual, obviously. Um, there is kind of an unspoken rule that um, I like to kind of go by that if you retain approximately, I like to say at least 15% of your income um, on a monthly basis, this is something that is a appropriate product for you. If you're starting to say, hey, I retain 20 or 25% of my money or more, then I think that there's some really big opportunities for you to not only leverage that uh, in the sense of, hey, let's invest it and let's also utilize this loan um, and kind of do both, both do both of investing and eliminating debt kind of at the same time um, to have a net win over just doing one or the other. I like where you're going with that. 